remind people of a historic and most important event for the Olympic Games and for the world. For the Olympic Games, because it proved the vitality and so successfully secured the continuity of the Games. And for the world, because it proved the lasting value of getting people of different countries to meet and to know and understand each other. And a great pleasure to introduce the one who has been so rightly called on to unveil the role of honor. When a young man, he was diffident about leading the British Olympic Association. But after retiring from active athletics, in which he was for long a great Olympic champion and the greatest hurdler in the world, he became its chairman. From this position, and with his many athletic distinctions, he was obviously a marked man for the position of chairman of the organizing committee of the 14th Olympiad. Much of the enormous success... Lord Aberdare, Your Excellency, my Lord, my Lord Mayor, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am here uh, today uh, masquerading because this ceremony should have been carried out, uh, as you will know, uh, by the Foreign Secretary, uh, Mr. Ernest Bevin. A wolf uh, in sheep's clothing, perhaps I should say uh, a lamb uh, uh, in lion's clothing. Although I must say my less friendly friends might complain about uh, the toughness uh, of the mutton. Well now, uh, may I too uh, say one word on rather a sad, sad subject, uh, and that is, there should have been another with us today, the one who played a great part in making the Games the success that they were, and that was our President of the Games, Lord Portal. And we mourn the fact that he is not with us. And here again, may I say, how delighted we all are uh, to have Lady Portal with us uh, on this occasion. The 6,000 chosen representatives of those 59 nations streamed in to the Olympic villages. The tens of thousands of spectators uh, came from every corner of the earth too. And then, on that never-to-be-forgotten day, that supreme moment in the sporting history of this country, that Thursday afternoon when the Olympic Games were declared open. Anybody who was present will never forget that great column of competitors marching into the arena to the deafening applause uh, of, the cr of a capacity crowd. They will never forget the intense silence when the King declared uh, the Games open and then the deafening applause afterwards. The dramatic moment when that torch arrived, having been lit from hand to hand, from torch to torch, right away through from ancient Olympia in Greece. The pages of that Olympiad, of those Olympic Games, of that book have been turned. <coughs> we are now at the last page and the book is now going to be closed. This was Wembley's finest hour. Many great occasions, great occasions of sport and other great occasions have been witnessed here uh, on this ground, but none, I believe, at the same deep and significant importance uh, as that two and a half weeks uh, during the Olympic Games. Pleasure uh, in unveiling these, tab these immortal scrolls. I now unveil the rolls of honor.